AIP for Public Safety Power Shutoff, or PSPS for short. These are time-sensitive, high-stakes situations that have a ton of different stakeholders, teams involved. We're trying to reduce the risk of wildfire while minimizing the disruption to our customers that rely on our grid. As a utility operator, I need to ensure the safety and reliability of my services, my assets, and make sure I'm operating in compliance with the laws and regulations. When there are weather conditions that increase the risk of wildfires in areas that I have assets, I may need to preemptively turn off power. This is public safety power shutoff. AIP is bringing together all the different risk factors from wind gusts to temperature fluctuations to fuel conditions or impacts, for example, whether I need to shut off power that impacts a medical facility or parameters I set for action, so specific regulatory requirements across different jurisdictions. As you're about to see, I'm able to triangulate time-dependent parameters from weather to underlying risk rasters to simulate, compare different plans as things evolve. All of these while maintaining audibility and traceability. All right, let's dive in. This is the PSPS planning app in the AIP Now Showcase. So you can see multiple different screenshots here, what it looks like to use the application, an overview and different key features. If you want to learn more, hit the request button, the team will reach out. But today we're actually going to look at this app together. So you can see at the top here, the latest event. So an event is essentially the basis for planning a potential intervention. The potential events are automatically tracked when the ambient conditions meet the utilities configured program threshold. So think about your NOAA data, third party weather data coming together, you're combining and AIP will create the region polygons to show the affected um, potential areas over time. So when I said, over time, that's a key point here. Let's dive a little bit deeper. So when I look at the plans, I actually have multiple versions because weather forecasts change, new data comes in. I wanna be able to go back and understand when I made a decision, what was the data I had at that point in time? That's great from a traceability and audibility standpoint. All right, if we move down to the map here, the brown area of interest, the brown polygons are the high environmental risk areas. So these are areas with lots of vegetation cover that puts at us at risk for fire, for example. So if we actually zoom forward through time a little bit, you can see here the blue is the weather event. So this is the area of interest from the weather event where they intersect our high environmental risk area. That's where it turns red. So that's great. So I understand where I'm at risk, but you know we want to know specific devices and people. So if I actually zoom in here, I can see these are the devices that are going to be impacted in that high risk area. These are things that I'm probably going to need to de-energize during the event to reduce the risk of fire. All right, now, just like your plan isn't um, static, the weather is not static, and so you need to be dynamic with it. And so if we actually look forward through time, our area of interest now has changed. So you can see the weather event over time now has new devices on the grid, new area of interest that I need to impact. So the first day versus the second day, right, I now need to account for that over time. That's really important because I wanna reduce the risk of fire, but I also wanna reduce the risk to my customers. So if we scroll down here on the screen a little bit, you can see actually kind of a Gantt chart of the devices and the de-energization of events that we're planning. So in this device, we're going to de-energize on the 7, 7 a.m. On, on the 6th and then re-energize on the 8th at 7 a.m. So that's a 48 hour period. That's pretty impactful. But because that weather wasn't in fact impacting this device on the first day, but it was on the second day, we're only going to take an outage for 24 hours here. So reducing the impact of these customers affected. But again, we're looking at devices here. This is, these aren't customers. Customers, if we scroll down here, you can see the residential business. These are actually tied back to specific customers. Uh, things that are important, like critical care facilities, medical, self-identified, vulnerable. So if we approve this PSPS de-energization plan, I need to send out notifications to everyone. But especially important to send out notifications for things like critical care facilities so they can keep people safe. We're now in our PSPS inbox. This is the common operating picture that we can look at different versions of the plan as the weather changes. AIP computes the diff as the weather forecast change, surfaces of that diff to me in an easily digestible way. Then we're calling out what's been added, what's been removed, what's in both plans, what's in neither plan. This enables me to pay attention to the most important aspects of my plan that are changing. I don't need to re-review the whole plan each time. This is very important. We don't have a lot of time. These events are usually at a large scale with multiple stakeholders planning region by region or circuit by circuit. So if we look at this example here, let's scroll back to the fit. If you remember from the overview, we're only looking at outages from the 6th and the 7th. And so here we had on the prior version, we actually had some de-energizing events and intervals on the 5th. We no longer need those because the weather forecast has changed. This is great. 
less impact to my customers. So then we can also see here, the area of interest has slightly changed a little bit. So you can see the new green area, the prior area here in the middle. So as these things are changing, I'm also seeing the polygons and overlaying the diffs between those. This is super helpful. So if we scroll down here, I can see what intervals were added, what were removed, modifying them. So you can see the timeframes for each device across this of when I'm de-energizing, how those have shifted from, from version two to version three. And as I go forward closer and closer to the event, I'll keep creating versions of this, really fine tuning to minimize the risk of fire and minimize risk to my customers. All right, so this allows me to review each suggested decision that's coming from AIP. We're keeping a human in the loop for these highly consequential decisions. I love it when data and AI come together to make the world a little bit safer place. AIP with PSPS planning workflow, which helps utility operators cut through all this complexity, plan critical events, often very fast moving events. AIP is enabling utility operators to quickly understand, evaluate different scenarios, their impacts over time and at different levels of granularity, all while maintaining audibility and traceability. Today, we just focused on planning. Our broader suite of operations and intelligence applications enable end-to-end -end management of PSPS events, focusing on planning, execution, recovery, and reporting. If you're interested in exploring these workflows, you'll be able to check them out on their AIP Now website, which we'll link to in the post. You can go ahead and hit the request button and our team will get back to you. Until next time.